So, in previous video, we did quality evaluation, but we did not define what quality is. Countless definitions of quality have been provided. On the screen, you can see some screenshots. The one on the left is from Wikipedia that cites several authors. The one on the top right is an article by David Garvin from 1984 where he tries to define what does product quality really mean. Finally, on the bottom right, Hoyer and Hoyer in 2001 cite eight well-known definitions of quality. And if we look, for example, the Hoyer's definitions, we can see uh, that he cites works from 1931 up to 1988. So the discussion around what is quality, what is product quality, what is service quality has been going around for decades. Okay, now we take the Wikipedia definitions screenshot as our running example and compare it to the two scales we evaluated for quality previously. I hope you have now already decided which of these are better in terms of quality. Let's have a look. So, what do these definitions say and which one will come out on top? Okay, American Society for Quality says that quality is perspectives for each person as his or her own de definition. So, in other words, each person can provide own definitions of quality and then decide. So if I look at these two scales, I'm just doing this from my viewpoint. I think that if I look into the practicality aspect, I like the smaller scale on the top much better. It's much smaller. Uh, the time it takes to weigh an object is much lower. And so on. So, if I define quality as, you know, to be practicality, then I think the top one is much better. But if I think of the scales, or, or if I think of the quality as an element of how it fits uh, my room, or how, how nice does it look, I actually prefer the lower scale. Not because it's easy to use for measurement. This was actually, in the video, it was the first time I've actually ever used it for measuring it, uh, or weighing anything. But because how it looks. It, it's old, it's sort of rigid, uh, it's solid, and um, it's just a nice looking object. So from that viewpoint, uh, I like the, the lower scale more. Okay, next one. Quality combines people power and process power. Okay. I quite frankly don't even understand what this means. And I guess I don't see no way of how this could be used to evaluate the quality of these two objects. Quite frankly, I think this is quite quite bad definition. And this is more like an example of why you shouldn't blindly trust Wikipedia. Because people can enter here whatever they like, and I think the second definition of quality is just... It's just awful. Don't write anything like this in your homework. It's, it's horrible. Okay, next one. Conformance to requirements. Okay, this is pretty standard. So there is a set of requirements, what the product is supposed to do, and then how well it meets those requirements, then that is quality. I can accept that. Uh, both of these scales meet the requirement that you can weigh objects with them. So they both satisfy the requirement. Then it would be a further discussion on how well they satisfy the requirement. But with this definition, you couldn't make a distinction between the objects. Okay, let's jump to definition 8 by Noriaki Kano. 
Um, he highlights two types of quality, must be quality and attractive quality. So in this case, attractive quality would be, or actually the must be quality would be that it can, that the scale can weigh something. If it cannot do that, it's not a valid scale. But what would then be the attractive quality? Well, for example, the top scale, the small one, has some nice features. For example, you can use different weighing schemes. So you can use grams, kilograms, and also imperial units like, like unces, for example. So that's, that's quite, that's sort of an attractive quality. It adds something to make the product more usable. Also, the top scale has the property that you can reset the scale. With, for example, if you put the plate on the scale, you can reset to zero. So then it's easy to measure how much food you are putting on your plate when you can reset like that. Of course, you can do the same kind of thing, the resetting also with the, with the lower scale by finding an equal plate to put on the other side. If you have two plates, then they would balance each other out. And then you can still do the measurements. So I think the top one is a bit more, it has more of those attractive quality features. Of course, if you consider attractive quality to just be how, how nice it looks, then the, then the bottom one is better. Okay, jumping the definition nine by, by Pierre Sieg. Uh, he states that it is a result of care. Okay, sounds a bit ambiguous, but I think what he means is that it has been, the product has been carefully constructed. So they took great care of, of building such a product. Uh, right, so how can this help us to evaluate the quality of these two things? Uh, Probably in times of manufacturing effort, building the scale on the bottom took much longer because it has wood, wooden parts, iron parts and everything. Of course, the one on the top required some electronics inside there uh, and some design, but right. And it probably required like a manufacturing line, whereas the one on the bottom would have been constructed just it's probably custom made, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's kind of hard to say how much care has been put into these products. I would say the one on the bottom scores higher on this, but not really sure. Okay, jumping to definition 10. So Six Sigma says, quality is number of defects per million opportunities. Right. Okay, so we can have two different interpretations of that in this context. The first one would be that we take each scale and we perform one million measurements and we see how they all correct. So we weigh one million different ob objects perhaps. Uh, another interpretation of this would be that we produce one million of both type of scales and then we see how many of them work correctly. Right. So if we take this latter definition, so we produce one million of each. I think the fact that the above one is built by modern manufacturing line probably makes it less less defect prone. On the other hand, if we take the, the former approach where we take single scale of both types and perform one million measurements, then it might actually be that the one on the top breaks down because it's, it doesn't seem that it has a very high durability. I mean, if we think, you know, 10 years into the future or 20 years into the future, which of these scales would still be functional. In this case, I would put my, uh, my money on the one on the bottom. From 20 years of now, it should still be functional. It has been functioning for 80 years already. It seems quite solid. None of the parts are broken. 
Uh, so it should function easily next 20 years. Uh, whereas the top, top scale, well, I mean, it could break down tomorrow or in the next five years, and probably it will break down in the next 10 years. And then you just don't even fix it, you just throw it to trash and buy a new one. Uh, but that's, that's the way things are currently. Okay, and definition number 12, value to some person. Uh, as we can see, these, these definitions already start to repeat themselves. Because this is quite similar to the, to the first one we looked into where each person has his or her own definition of what quality is. That was by the American Association of Quality. 